All right, YouTube, it's time to talk about what's happening in Milwaukee. Sort of an eerie shadowing of Ferguson. Same basic situation. Somebody gets killed by a cop, only this time the cop was black. Kills a young black man who had pointed a gun at the cop, no less, and everybody falls into uproar. Right after it happens, apparently a bunch of like anarchists and BLM members, they, they're all birds of the same feather, got together and decided to go burn cop cars and attack storefronts. And also, they were attacking random white people and like shouting racial slurs at them. And I wonder if we're going to hear Obama denounce this horrible racist violence. I'm going to wait. And there are plenty of crickets outside right now. And they'll be singing for the next 10,000 years before somebody like Obama, race baiter as he is, an opportunist, a corporate shill, who uses these events to push his political agenda, before he'll actually say anything about anybody who's not white being racist. Unless it's like George Zimmerman, who is like a white Hispanic, which is a term that the liberals called racist itself before that trial, and then they took it upon themselves to take the term and start using it frequently. Uh, and it was really very funny to me. <clears throat> What's happening in Milwaukee, though, is difficult for me, as with all riots that break out from police shootings. Because, as a libertarian, I don't believe in militarized police. I don't believe that police should randomly follow people around and try to harass them. I don't believe they should beat people. I don't believe they should be armed like soldiers. I don't believe that their power is unlimited. I don't believe in... Uh, civil asset forfeiture or any of these other things or no-knock raids or warrantless searches uh, DUI checkpoints I don't believe in any of these things because they're all unconstitutional I think that oftentimes large metropolitan police forces not like small town forces generally or you know your your local sheriff in your five hometown but metropolitan police forces in the big cities uh, are extremely corrupt it's like machine politics like Tammany Hall only ten times worse so on that token, I can see why people would get tired of them. But on the other hand, the response shouldn't be, oh, let's burn our own city to the ground. What the fuck does that prove except that you're a violent mob and that the police are, are, the police are justified when they beat you to the ground? Because for a lot of people who don't live in large metropolitan areas and don't understand the mentality of officers that live there because, you know, there are gangs everywhere. You know, they're there because of the drug war. They're there because of the fucking government. It's funny to see BLM act like Obama's the savior and, and government will help them. Government's not going to fucking help you. It's never helped you and it never will. It doesn't help anybody in the goddamn country. That's why we need to constrain it. Those gangs are there because of the government's failed war on drugs, as well as the government's failed war on guns, the government's failed war on people who might catch their own rainwater, people who have their garden in the wrong spot, people who said the wrong thing on social media. It's just a bunch of 1984 nonsense. But in order to deal with that fact, what you need is libertarianism. What you need is, is severe constraints on government power. What you need to do is not attack private business owners who had nothing to do with the problem, because that's just fucking retarded. Random white people in the street, for all you know, that white person that you just beat to the ground is like an ACLU advocate, or, or marched with Martin Luther King or something. So why the fuck would you randomly target them unless you're a retarded opportunist just like your savior Obama is? So, and, and burning like cop cars and stuff, well that just gets the National Guard involved. And they're far better trained and far better armed than even the most militarized police are. And so you're not going to be able to do much against them because you'll get your skull fragmented. So I just don't understand the response <clears throat> that these retarded groups always launch into. It always starts off the same, though. Some idiot on social media goads a bunch of people into going looting and shooting so that they can go grab more weave or whatever. Uh, or, or free liquor, or something like that. And then the situation devolves from there, and the, the sad part is, the people in that community that are being troubled by the militarized police that want reform, they never get it, because all the nation sees on TV are a bunch of people looting and shooting and raping and pillaging, like a barbarian horde circa the Dark Ages, and they see the police standing there, and they, they see the police standing there as brave by comparison, as brave and lawful and orderly. Now, I'm not taken in by that sort of propagandist imagery 
that gets shown any more than I am the sort of propaganda that says, oh, BLM has a point. We should listen to Black Lives Matter. Maybe we should pay reparations even though nobody today owned a fucking slave. Now, I'm not taken in by either side. I think that they're all retarded. The Metro Police forces in this country are out of control. The difference is, if they shoot a white person, the mainstream media doesn't cover it. And because they don't cover it, and because there's no outrage, there's no riot. But every time a young black man gets shot, even if he aimed his gun at the police and the officer who shot him himself was fucking black, or some other minority, it becomes immediate racial issue. Obama says, oh, that could have been my son. And all of these problems spiral out of control. Don't you think that responding to it a little bit differently might be in order? As in, Obama should shut the fuck up, the media should shut the fuck up, and wait and see what happens, and wait until they get the full story? The media, is, the media and the government are the ones responsible for this mess. They always have been and they always will be. The two-party system, collectively, together, has been in power for a century and a half in this country. And every goddamn bad law, whether it affects blacks or whites or Asians or all of the above or none of the above, maybe it affects cats and dogs, maybe it affects your cucumber crop, every bad law and regulation was handed down by them. And that's the secret, because they don't want you to realize that, because if these black communities ever abandon the corporate leftist movement and the Hillary Clintons that put the tough-on-crime ordinances into effect, putting several million black people in prison in the last couple of decades, I'm sure she won't be talking about the glowing success of those programs at any of her rallies in Milwaukee or anywhere else, unless she's out in some fucking lily-white area like the one she retardedly lives in. You know, you'd think she would have a bunch of refugees in her mansion and be living in a black neighborhood because she's so progressive and diverse and, and all of my friends are minorities mode. But no, she lives in a lily-white gated community with a nice big wall around her house. And when she's in those communities, she says, yeah, don't, don't, we don't care about those minority voters. Fuck them. They're just cheap manpower uh, at the polling places. And that's all she cares about. It's very funny to see the minorities vote against their own self-interest. I'm not saying vote like Republican, because they perpetuate the same nonsense too. Why do you think I've abandoned the two-party system? Because my fellow Americans come in various colors, and they're all suffering right now. We're all suffering under the retarded economy we've got right now. <clears throat> if gun control is implemented, it increases crime in black communities, white communities, Asian communities. It doesn't really matter. When the government wastes money, it's all of our money, and it's the government's fault. And the government is tied in with the media, like Clinton especially, though. She's literally got allies in every media organization, it seems. Uh, money flows freely back and forth, and nobody even, even gives a fuck. As you watch Milwaukee slowly smolder in the flames of the last couple of nights, just remember who is responsible predominantly for the types of ordinances that tore these communities apart. It was the Clintons, and that's who is primarily responsible. <clears throat> Those are Clinton-era programs. The Clintons are not liberals. They're police statists. They're shills. They're corporatists. That's all they'll ever be. Hillary can pretend, oh, yeah, we need to end, end marijuana prohibition. <laughs> yeah, right, like she's actually going to legalize it. <laughs> You're fooling yourself. Oh, I'll go to Area 51, and if there's aliens there, I'll tell people. This is her campaign. And meanwhile, Milwaukee just sits there and rots. Ferguson just sits there and rots. All these fucking metropolitan areas. Prime, and, and the uniting factor, whether it's Republicans, Democrats, whoever was in charge at the time, the uniting fact is that it's always a police state. And the uniting fact is that after the police state showed its ass to the population, people rioted and they burned their own communities to the ground, like a bunch of retards. So yeah, I don't have that much sympathy for either side. I don't have sympathy for the dude who was shot because he fucking tried to shoot the police officer. I don't have sympathy for the police in Milwaukee because the police in Milwaukee are idiots. I don't have sympathy for BLM because BLM are idiots. I certainly don't have sympathy for the government. I've got no sympathy left to give for these people. It's just a self-perpetuating cycle of bullshit, really, is what it is. Um, so yeah, there's my analysis of the Milwaukee situation. It's, uh, it's screwed up, just like Ferguson was. That's about all. Peace out.